What's up, guys? Classy Metal here. Happy 2023. We are in the new year, and before we can march forward and see what good things that this year has in store for us, we need to wrap up uh, 2022. Mainly, I need to show you guys my top 25 releases of the year. Now, I always have to do this disclaimer before I start out on the video. This is my list. This is not your list. There's stuff in here that you don't agree with. I mean, it's just the way it is. My tastes are better than your taste, and that's just something that you're going to have to live with and, and deal with going forward. But all joking aside, um, I did step away from social media for a good portion of 2022. And uh, during that time, I was not seeing um, what everyone else was listening to. I wasn't getting really updated on new material coming out. I was just kind of focused on finding stuff on my own, listening to what I had in my possession and my list it varies quite a bit from a lot of the other lists that i've been seeing i think that may play a big role in it uh all the items that i'm going to show on my list are uh items that i own on a physical format this is a uh, channel that promotes physical media and i will only be showing stuff that i actually own so if something's missing off my list there's a chance maybe i just don't own it yet i mean and there's always the possibility that i just did not like it as much as you did uh, that being said, we're just going to jump right into this. I don't want to spend a ton of time. It's 25 albums. This this video could get really long if I just ramble on for too much. I will have everything that I show linked up down in the description. That way, uh, if you see something that piques your interest and you want to check it out, it will be down there at your disposal. I am recording in the afternoon. I tend to record all of my material early in the morning so if you hear a lot of traffic outside i do apologize for that it's just something that we're going to have to deal with i did eat some very hot sauce uh last night so and it, my voice is still kind of off from that so <clears throat> my voice sounds off i apologize for that as well coming in at number 25 we have aries kingdom with their fifth full length entitled in darkness at last uh this is a band out of kansas city missouri very consistent band this is only their fifth album in a span of about 25 years. Um, their previous album, this band is kind of known for this kind of uh, death-infused thrash metal, very thrashy death metal at times. They, they kind of uh, circumnavigate those two genres back and forth. I'm really surprised this band hasn't gotten bigger than what they actually have. Uh, their previous full length, um, I, the name just slipped my mind, but we won't backtrack. Uh, the previous full link to this, they kind of brought in this uh, black metal sound into their sound as well. With this latest full length, uh, In Darkness at Last, they returned back to their roots and they did it amazingly. This is possibly my favorite Aries Kingdom in their entire discography. Uh, it, 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 it's solid and this band definitely deserves more recognition than what they're getting. Just kind of dark, evil death slash thrash metal that that will just snap your neck clean off so if you haven't checked out aries kingdom um, do yourself a favor and definitely check this one out at number 24 i had a i had a strong feeling when i first listened to this album that it was going to make my end of the year list and uh there's been so much old school death metal that's just been like pushed down our throats when when something sticks out to you especially in a genre that you're hearing so much material from that's how you know you're onto something that you really like uh, this is a band out of Canada. This is Last Wretch with Sadism and Severed Heads. Uh, this came out in September. I just kind of found this one day uh, going through Bandcamp. I was, I was just looking for something new, uh, something to listen to while I was at work. The artwork kind of stuck out to me, and then uh, I listened to it, and I was like, yeah, that's good. It was almost an auto purchase. Picked it up from, the, uh, from Bandcamp and CDN Records, and I was not disappointed in the least. Uh, just killer, um, riff-heavy, old-school death metal. If you're into that that whole new resurgence of that new wave of old-school death metal, definitely check this one out if you have not done so. Uh, definitely deserved a spot on the list, and it came in at number 24. Uh, next up, one that I expected to place higher on the list when it was uh, released back in February, and it's still a very strong release. It just kind of fell as the year went on, and I listened to other material. Uh, it's the newest full length from Shape of Despair, entitled Return to the Void. I really like this album. Uh, my favorite Shape of Despair release uh, is 2001's Angels of Distress. I'm kind of in the minority on that. A lot of people, that's one of their weaker albums in some people's mind. 
but Return of the Void kind of had that Angels of Distress feel for me, and I think I, I had set this up on a pedestal when I first heard it so high because it had that nostalgia feel, like I was going back in time and, and listening to Angels of Distress. Uh, there's some there's some hints of illusions play going on on this as well. Very solid material. I just haven't returned to it as much as I thought I would throughout the entirety of the year. But that being said, it's still very solid funeral doom metal, and I, I do love this record. At number 22, we have uh, To the Dogs with Light the Fires. This came out back in June uh, through Life After Death Productions, Life After Death 616. Killer, killer release. Killer debut album here from To the Dogs. This is kind of a crust metal, death metal hybrid that is just absolutely phenomenal. And it's been overlooked by just about everybody. I've seen Ken from Ken's Death Metal Crypt uh, do a post about this. And I think Rick from the Dreadful Minute. So that, that's the only two people that I've really even seen mention that. If you've mentioned that, uh, mentioned this album and I missed it, I do apologize. But those, those are the only two people right off the top of my head that, I, that I've seen, uh, that I've even heard talk about this at all. It's phenomenal. Uh, this came out and I ordered it during the time period that I was taking my little break from social media and I had a lot of time to myself. I was in the process of moving and uh, this stayed in the car stereo for quite some time and it's just absolutely phenomenal. Uh, Life After Death recent, recently did a half off sale that just ended on New Year's Day. I hope you picked this up on that sale. If you didn't, you definitely uh, did yourself a disservice on that. At number 21, uh, this is another one that I spent a lot of time listening to over the summer. Uh, this is a New Jersey thrash outfit entitled Morbid Cross with their, uh, I believe this is their second full length, uh, Ungodly Infestation. I almost said Manifestation. It's Infestation. I, I kind of went blank there for a second. The artwork is what uh, initially drew me in on this. Uh, I was expecting some death metal. There are a few little hints of death in this style of thrash, but this is just some evil, uh, almost uh, occult, satanic sounding thrash metal. It like the 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 vocals on this definitely definitely are what makes the sound uh, like brings it full circle. It just has this very raspy dark evil sounding vocal attack on this and they they have a way of uh incorporating like multiple layers of, of vocals over top of one each other of over top of each other that just has this like uh, almost demonic sound to it uh i was in a pretty dark place already when i listened to this and this album just went down to the depths with me and uh Instead of kicking me while I was down or not even lifting me up while I was down there, it just kind of held my hand and, and we uh, we banged heads the whole time we were down in that pit of despair. Uh, next up, uh, this has been this was one of the bigger surprises for me. I did not even know that this album was coming out this year. Uh, it's not a band that I really just follow too closely. I own one of their prior releases uh, leading up to this, but this by far is leaps of, and bounds ahead of anything else that, the, that I've heard from them. Uh, this is San Francisco speed metal band Hellfire uh, with their newest release entitled Reckoning. This came out back in August, um, and I think this is their uh, fourth full length, I want to say. I could be wrong on that, but I believe this is their fourth full length. I only, I've only heard uh, one other album from them that was 2017's Free Again, which was a, a decent a decent effort. But man, this one just absolutely floored me. I was not expecting it to be this good, and I was blown away. Very melodic, uh, very riff heavy. It's kind of got this thrash metal, speed metal, traditional heavy metal feel going on. Even some power metal uh, tinges here and there within this. Amazing stuff. If if you're not familiar with Hell Hellfire. This is the time to do so. Definitely check this one out and definitely deserving a spot on this list. Had a pop-up come up on the laptop. Let me clear that and we will continue on. Hopefully it won't cause any lagging. Seems like every year there's some kind of issue with every one of these end of the year videos that I do. Uh, next up, we have some more death metal. At number 19, we have Italian kind of dissonant slash technical death metal band Cosmic Putrefaction uh, with their third full length entitled Crepuscular, Crep, I'm going to butcher this, Crep, Crepuscular Dirge for the Blessed Ones. Yeah, I'll try saying that about four times fast. 
Uh, this is a band that gets better on every full length. They, they bring a sense of technicality in on this third full length that is just absolutely unmatched. It's just down-tuned, technical, dissonant death metal, uh, almost like cosmic death metal, I think is a, a better term for this. I absolutely love this. I think John from uh, Thralls of Metal put this on his end of the year list as well. I, I'm very surprised that it has not popped up on other people's uh, end of the year list. I don't know why it was so overlooked. But this is a phenomenal release. Uh, if you're not familiar with this, you should go familiar, familiarize yourself with this band in an instant because you are definitely uh, missing out. At number 18, uh, it seems like every year um, I find I find some kind of like epic doom metal or melodic doom metal album uh, from following the Death Doom Metalheads channel, and this is another one of those albums. Uh, this is Ard with uh, Take Up My Bones. This is a band out of the UK, and this is their debut full length, I want to say, of melodic doom metal. It kind of teeters into that epic doom metal realm at times. Uh, this was released back in February, right around the time that I that I had COVID. And um, I remember just laying there in my recliner, feeling like garbage, and playing this album over and over and over. And I was just in a, a, a horrible state. And uh, this album kind of helped get me through th that time period. The, my two favorite tracks on this are probably the longest two tracks on this, uh, and they both have that kind of epic doom feel going on. Uh, there's Raised Then, The Incorrupt Body, uh, track number three. That one was very fitting for my, <laughs> my little battle with COVID there. And then the last track, Only Three Shall Know. Those were definitely my two favorite tracks on this, but the album in entirety is pretty solid and definitely a uh, worthwhile listen. At number 17... An album that would probably be higher on this list if I've had a little bit more time to spend with it. Uh, each time I return to this, I hear something that I didn't hear before and something that, that just kind of piques my, my interest a little bit more. Uh, this is Black Braid with Black Braid 1. Uh, this was released in August, but I was very late to the game on picking this up. Uh, this is atmospheric black metal, Native American themed um, atmospheric black metal. It seems like there's like tons of uh, native themed black metal bands just all of a sudden popping up. This band does it a little bit different. They they uh, there's a sense of anger and ferociousness behind the 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 hints of uh, sadness and melancholy. They don't just focus on on um, like a melancholic style of atmospheric black metal or even a, a nature um, worship type theme. That, that there's there's a sense of ain't of rebellion and angst and anger that builds up uh, constantly through through this release. It, it's a beautiful release. It's a heartbreaking release when you think of the plight that the that these people have been put through. But uh, all in all, a fantastic release. Like I said, it's at number 17, but if I'd had more time to spend with that, I, I could easily see that one kind of climbing the ranks of this list. Uh, next up, an album that was released. I think this one came out back in February. No, this one actually came out in January. And uh, it, 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 I had to actually look up to make sure that this was a 2022 release because it just feels like it's been out forever. Uh, this is Druid Lord with Relics of the Dead. Druid Lord is one of those bands that, that is like aging perfectly. They, there's a... Uh, a step up in each of their albums, a, step, a feel of an increase of a uh, feel of maturity in each of their albums, and I have not dis been disappointed yet when uh, when they've released something new. Killer death metal, I, I guess death doom metal out of Orlando. For some reason, in my mind, I always want to say that this band is out of Chicago, and sometimes you can almost like hear a band's geography and their sound. I put this on to start listening to it. I was like, nope, not Chicago. This band is out of Florida. And for some reason, it takes me listening to it to spark that over um, in my head uh, of the geography of this band. It's been four years since their previous full length. I think that was a perfect amount of time for the band to kind of hit their stride, come up with something this phenomenal. And definitely looking forward to see where the, the band kind of moves to going from this because they just keep getting better. At number 15, uh, we have... I'm going to butcher this one. A band off of Black Line Records. Uh, this is Kavian, Kavian with uh, The Great Below. This is melodic black metal, uh, Viking, kind of Viking slash pagan themed melodic black metal. Uh, their previous release, uh, I think it came out in 2020, The Funeral Pyre. 
was absolutely amazing. This one kind of builds off of that and, and definitely keeps that flame burning. Uh, there's a couple tracks on here uh, that I uh, that that just really stick out to me. The one that I really like was the title track, uh, "The Great Below." Jeff Loomis actually has a guest uh, guitar solo on that that just blew like blew my brains out. I mean that that was caught me completely off guard. There's a lot of guest musicianship and a lot of uh, a, a lot of like little guest spotlights going on and hidden throughout this album, almost like Easter eggs. And, and once you kind of know where those are and start listening to it, it's just another thing of, of this album, another way it kind of grows on you. But killer stuff there. This is another one that I haven't spent as much time with as I probably should have. Uh, upon repeat listens in the future, I'm sure this is another one that, that would probably move even higher on the list if I had given it the proper opportunity. At number 14, uh, this was my band that had the album of the year last year and they're back on the list again this year at number 14 uh this is grima 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 with uh frostbitten uh this came out in july their previous full-length rotten garden was an absolute masterpiece it was my album of the year last year it came out last january and here here they are a year and a half later uh coming out with another phenomenal release frostbitten kind of changes up the soundscapes a little bit very much uh has much colder atmospheres going on as you would expect with the with that artwork and the sound of this the song title um the the tracks they they opted to go for a little bit longer tracks on this particular album i do like it i feel like it was a bit of a step back from rotten garden just because i felt like it was going to be almost impossible for that band to to follow that one up anyway but this is still a phenomenal release and uh you know, got you guys know I'm a sucker for Russian atmospheric black metal. Anyway, let me take a swig, and we will jump on number thirteen. Uh, this is a band that I haven't heard anybody talk about. Uh, this is kind of a international a band. I say international. It has members from uh, the Netherlands and Sweden working together. Members from the bands uh, Necrophobic and Cryptosis kind of got together and formed this project. This is Inafelian with their debut album entitled Moribund. Uh, this is some black metal that has like these 80s horror themes going on. The intro has this like uh, synthy uh, 80s horror. I think it may even be taken actually out of an 80s horror film. It just has that feel going on to it. Even the throwback kind of looking uh, artwork there just works completely well with, with the sound that this band has going on. Uh, there's a track on here entitled The Luciferian Age. If you're looking for something to get into and try for this band, that is a good starting point. But I do enjoy this entire album, obviously, because it is number 13 on my list. Amazing stuff. I, I don't think that this made the rounds like it should have. I'm kind of guilty of stuff myself. I mean, me taking my break from YouTube and my break from social media this past year, I haven't shown everything that I've been picking up and, and some of the stuff that I really love just hasn't gotten the spotlight that it deserves. I'm hoping to do a better job of that in 2023. And uh, maybe this will be a little bit of a catalyst for me to do so. So definitely check this one out. Uh, speaking of that eighties kind of horror theme vibe, uh, this, the, these just kind of landed on the list right next to each other, but you know, that kind of goes hand in hand with the, with the, uh, the albums that I'm showing at number 12, we have VHS with uh, Deep Gashes and Long Lashes. Uh, this is kind of death metal, grindcore, thrash metal fused with these kind of poppy dance, 80s sounding, 80s sounding horror theme stuff going on. Very hard for me to describe this band. Uh, this band. Uh, VHS stands for Violent Homicidal, uh, yeah, I forget. But Slasher, Violent Homicidal Slasher, I think is what VHS stands for. And I mean, it just has that that throwback uh, 80s cheesy, campy horror feel going on. This was released on Halloween. I think that that's why that this album is so high up on my list because I wore this out. When it, when it was released on Halloween, I was listening to it at work. I remember dancing to this, uh, getting off of my forklift with my earbuds in and, and dancing to this while I was at work. My mindset was just there for Halloween. I just went blurry. There we go. 
my mindset was just right there. It was it was an album that was released at a perfect time for me personally, just that I could immerse myself in. I was in that mental state that this just worked absolutely perfectly for me. Definitely my favorite VHS uh, release to date, and definitely uh, something that, that kind of got me more into that band than I already was. At number 11, we have a very uh, a thick death metal album, for, for lack of a better term. Uh, this is Mortuous with uh, Upon Desolation. Th I mean, look at that artwork. Just looking at that artwork lets you know what you're getting into. This is just a thick, heavy, old-school death metal release. Um, very sulfuric. Like, you could almost smell the underworld sulfurs coming up and, and just uh, and just weighing you down. A very oppressive-sounding uh, old-school death metal release. And I absolutely love this. If you have not checked this one out, I don't know what's wrong with you. And uh, there's there's no saving you. Let's go to the top 10. Now we're getting kind of into the meat and potatoes of the list. Uh, next up, this is one, as soon as I heard this, I knew that I had found something special. And I have to uh, thank the uh, the label Ad Adirondack uh, Black Mass for, for sending me the package that they did because I probably never would have checked this out otherwise, and I would have been completely missing out. Uh, this is a black metal project out of California entitled Wither Moon uh, with their debut full length, A Testament to Our Will. This is very nihilistic uh, black metal. As I was speaking on earlier, sometimes you can kind of feel a geography uh, through through uh, through the music, and this has like a beachy California black metal vibe going on, and it it has this uh, almost playful will that that kind of lures you in. It's, uh, it's it's very dark, but it's got like this almost like demonic feel. Like it, it's very playful, something that that wants to kind of lure you in with that playfulness before they just absolutely decimate you into into nothingness. And they're able to pull that off absolutely perfectly with this release. I knew the, the very first track is like this intro for about a minute, but the second track, uh, Reason for Existence, within maybe two minutes of that track, that's when I knew that I had stumbled onto something completely special and something that I'm going to be returning to for probably years to come now. At number nine, uh, uh, an album that I haven't seen anybody post on, on their list, and that's very surprising to me. Uh, this is some more black metal. This is some kind of uh, transcendental, transcending style black metal. Uh, this is Venom with a third, third full length entitled Legend. I was initially, uh, this band, I guess, was initially brought to my attention in 2019 with their release Ageless Fire. I really like that one as well. And uh, this one is kind of a step up from that. It's five tracks, about 47 minutes, and it's kind of divided into two chapters. The first three tracks kind of make up the first part, and then the, the, the last two tracks uh, kind of wrap up the album on, on like a, a second a second chapter or a second part to the album. Uh, it It's 47 minutes, but it really flies by. There, there's a sense of uh, a melody that goes on in this style of black metal, and it's just... It, like with the the themes of transcendence transcendence uh, going on, I mean it fits. You kind of get that that feel like you're you're um, that you're ascending as you're listening to this. Uh, with that with with lack of a better term, that's the only way I know to put it. But definitely some killer stuff there from Vanum, and I, I'm super surprised that I have not heard that on some other people's lists uh, so far. At number eight, we have a band. I believe they're out of Belgium. Uh, they're 2018. Their last full length came out in 2018, and it was entitled Stardust. And I was head over heels in love with that. And I, they've kind of been off my radar. They've had a couple of EPs since then that were pretty good, but they never really lived up to the 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 uh, pedestal that I had that that 2018 album came uh, like set up on. And then I heard this release. Uh, this is Soul Dissolution with their newest output entitled Sora. I believe that's how you pronounce it. It's the, the Japanese-looking uh, symbol there. This is some killer, killer stuff. Uh, this this album made me fall in love with this band all over again. This is atmospheric black metal, post, I guess atmospheric post-black metal. Uh, they're able to tote that line between melancholic. There's like a, there, there's a sadness uh and a feeling of loss 
steeped deep into the roots of this band, but they're with this album, there's like a sense of hope as well. They're, they're, they're able to play it back and forth. Just, you know, you feel like loss, but there, there's a sense of hope moving forward with that loss, uh, is, is the feeling that I get through, through this, um, through this album. It's only five tracks and, uh, but it, it, it's some killer, killer stuff. I, I say only five tracks, but it has a pretty long runtime with those five tracks. Definitely doesn't overstay its welcome. And uh, definitely worth your while on checking that one out. Take another drink. These uh these videos, when you do it like I do with no editing and no breaks, it, it can get a bit exhausting being this long-winded. At number seven, some more old-school death metal. This is Phobophilic with uh, enveloping obs obscurity. Ob enveloping absurdity there we go should have known that uh, i was originally introduced to this band back in 2019 with their ep uh undimensioned in Ent entities and this is definitely the best thing that i've heard from them so far i was not expecting this to be as good as it is but this is super oppressive um uh, like even going back to some of some of the the feelings that that mortuous album that i was talking about that uh, sulfuric oppressive this this is super oppressive feeling. Uh, that thickness is there. This is, makes you feel like you're not alone. It makes you feel like uh, something is watching you. And I think it just has to do with the, the lyrical themes on this. It just makes you feel like uh, there is a greater evil that is just uh, oppressing every, every portion of your life. And it's just a fight to try to break through from that. I love this album. I loved it so much that I actually have a hoodie ordered and on the way from Night Shift merch, because uh, th this has just been like a constant go back to for me since it came out back in September. At number six, uh, this is another one that was a huge surprise for me. I knew this album was going to be good. I heard their, their EP that came out last year, and, and their EP was pretty good, but this is leaps and bounds ahead of that. I mean, th there there was no business of this full length being, uh, they had no business making something this good. This is a mother of graves with their new, with their debut full length, uh, where the shadows adorn that in sober dreams, EP was good. I mean, don't get me wrong. That was a good EP, but it was just kind of there. I heard this and like, I scratched my head and I was like, wait a minute that did that just really happen and i immediately it was like an immediate replay back over this very melodic uh death doom very melancholic uh, kind of uh, that seems to be a, a theme i guess of uh things that i've been listening to this year but there's like a sadness and, and a weight that that just weighs you down with this one but the the vocals on this are absolutely perfect i think that's the strongest asset that this band has uh, i mean don't i'm not knocking the musicianship on this they are all very talented but the the vocal delivery on this just works absolutely perfect and and conveys those feelings it can bring out emotions in you that you weren't even feeling before you started listening to this it, it just has a way of a kind of evoking feeling out of you that you didn't know that you had so killer stuff there from Mother of Graves. Kudos, guys, on releasing that one. That that was phenomenal. Uh, let's see how many downvotes and dislikes and unsubscribes I can get for this next one that I'm going to show. I'm actually surprised this one didn't rank a little bit higher uh, as I was going through this. If I was to base this on just the amount of playtime that this album, that all of the albums have had this year, this would be number one. I've listened to it more than anything else, but we'll just get into it. We have Ghost with uh, Impera. Man, if you would have told me at the beginning of the year that I would have be making a album of the year video with Ghost in the top five, I would I probably wouldn't talk to you anymore. I mean, it's a band that I've enjoyed. I've always enjoyed them, but they've just kind of been there for me. This this album is it's just it's just stellar. I keep going back to this and. If you're into any type of the, uh, like the, the, I guess you could say like Christian, uh, derived occult stuff, like, like the Christian demon and, and hell and, and that type of, uh, uh, ideology, then you're going to find little Easter eggs and stuff that, that are just kind of playfully hid throughout this album. It, it, it's kind of, uh, it, it's very clever. It's a, you know, it's, it's 
it's mind blowing that they're able to bury those things uh, so deep into this album, and you're able to pick up little little Easter eggs and hints of stuff that, like the average, if you weren't exposed to some of that stuff, uh, the average person wouldn't even pick up. It is that crazy. Maybe the just the uh, intelligence behind what appears to be just on the surface such a simple album is uh, what has drawn me back and made me replay this over and over and over. And even the tracks that I wasn't just super huge on uh, from the get-go, like like 20s, that track, when I first heard this, I was not a fan of that track. Now going back, just it, it, the album wouldn't feel right if that track wasn't there. And this is another one of those albums that uh, has like a weird uh, comfort to it. Like you can listen to this and not feel alone. And it, it's not like in a bad way, despite the, the themes going on in that. But uh, for lack of a better term, that's just the... The only way I know to put that. At number four, we have some zombie zombie themed death metal. Uh, we have Undeath with uh, "It's Time to Rise from the Grave." I know a lot of people felt like that this was a step back from from uh, Legions of a Different Kind that came. Out, I think that was came out what 2020. I, I know a lot of people loved that album and, and felt this was a bit of a step back, maybe because it was a bit more catchy. I, I'm not sure. I thought that this was uh, way above Legions of a Different Kind. Don't get me wrong. I did enjoy that debut. But this is just, like, this is so catchy. It, it sticks with me. And I, I find myself wanting to come back and return to this. This came out back in April. And it's still getting playtime today. It is definitely the, the best death metal release that I've heard all year. Um, you have that Echelon of like m melodic death metal, not even melodic, just the, the echelon. I felt like, all right, I, I'll try to put it in words. You had Cannibal Corpse for so long, they they were right there. Then the Black Dahlia murder came around for another generation of people. And I feel like that this band is on pace to, to be on that level. If they keep releasing stuff and going in the, in the way that they're going, I could easily see this band like being a torchbearer for death metal for years and years to come. So... Absolutely love this release from Undeath. I don't, I don't, uh, I, I really just don't get the the backlash that that album kind of had going with it. it not really backlash, that just the way that some people felt like that was a step down because I thought the exact opposite. Now we go to the top three. Uh, as I was saying at the very beginning of this video, the uh, like th these videos really don't matter in the grand scheme of things. Like you could come back like six weeks from now, my entire list might be different. And these top three at least could be shuffled around in a different position. They've been jockeying for position since each one of these releases was released. But this is the, the order that I have them in for today. At number three, we have Portuguese black metal band Gadea with uh, Mirage. Absolutely phenomenal release. Uh, the 2020 release Limbo was good. I, I felt like the, the prior release, Unsettling Whispers, was definitely uh, my favorite release from from this band. And with this, they were to, able to kind of backtrack into the ideas that they had in that Unsettling Whispers um, album and expand on it in, in, a, in a better way. This is probably my favorite release from this band now. I, I felt uh, like when I first heard this, I knew that I, that I was going to love this. I mean, I knew that it was something that I was going to keep returning back to throughout the year. It is a good gateway black metal band. I think a lot of uh, people that aren't are, are kind of new to black metal as a whole. Uh, you couldn't just throw in something completely uh, raw and, and, and dissonant, and it would it would scare them away. This is something that I feel like is is a great a great starting point for someone looking get, to get into black metal. It's just done, uh, the instrumentation on this is done absolutely flawlessly. It's catchy. It's dark. It's just, it, it encompasses the things that you want from black metal, and it kind of makes them in, a, in an accessible manner. Uh, my son actually likes this band. He's not into black metal, but this is a band that he can get into. So uh, definitely killer stuff there from Garea, and I absolutely love that album. These two that I'm going to show especially could flip-flop back and forth. They both flip-flop back and forth in my head since uh, since they've both been out. At number two, we have Grief Circle with Weightless. Uh, this is a band out of Poland. This is kind of atmospheric doom metal, sludgy, post-metal. It, it's just absolutely phenomenal. 
Uh, you guys know, I've, I've, if you follow this channel for any amount of time, then you know that uh, the band Mona, uh, M-O-A-N-A-A, -A, I think is uh, how you spell that, uh, is no stranger to this channel. Their 2014 album, before I even started making YouTube, the 2014 album Descent was my favorite release from 2014. Uh, the singer from Mona is actually the singer for Grief Circle. Uh, Mona is on hiatus, and it just feels like this band is a, uh, kind of brought that sound and expanded on it a little bit it definitely has its own identity as a project but i guess maybe just because the vocalist is the same uh that that similarity that comfort that feeling is there with this being a debut album um you can tell that all of these these members are seasoned members they're seasoned musicians this isn't something new it feels like some of these ideas were probably ideas that they had bouncing around in some of their other projects and never came into fruition. And they finally were able to um, get together at the right place at the right time with the right group of people and put it into fruition. The very first track on this, uh, Cursed, I believe is the first track. Uh, I was hooked. I was hooked on the very, like within two minutes of hearing the first track, I'd already ordered this release. The, the title track, Weightless, is phenomenal on this as well, but if you're into that kind of sludgy, atmospheric, uh, even post-metal sounding stuff, I guarantee you, within that first track, within that first listen, you're going to know that you're onto something that you really like, because I know I was, and uh, very deserving. At times, this could have been number one throughout the year. It's just these two albums have, have fought back and forth between one and two. It's probably closer to a tie than one being number one and one being number two. And then here we are uh, with my album of the year of 2022. We have Maris Mieli with uh, Martaden Mayalta. At this point, you guys are probably going to think that I have Nottermott Productions on payroll or they have me on payroll. Every year they put out an album that I've, I've just, there's no turning back for me when I hear it. I mean, I hear it and I absolutely just kind of know that that's going to be my favorite release from that year and nothing. I, I walk away from that album feeling uh, complete, and, and it, this this is another one that's done it for me. This is a band out of Finland. Uh, they play a style of kind of a folky, pagan, black metal. Uh, they, they're able to envelop like these atmospheres within their music as well. Killer stuff. Uh, a lot of times when you're you're ranking albums and and you're putting albums in, in a particular order or position on a list. Uh, you think of replay value. That's one that definitely pops out. And, and there is some replay value for this band. I mentioned this when I talked about this album earlier on in the year. The replay value, yeah, it's there. But it's not an album that I can just pull off and listen to every day. That, that type of replay value is not there. This is an album that I pull off when I want to hear this album, when I want to hear something like this. And I leave listening to this album feeling completely full completely satisfied it, it it just does everything that i would have ever asked for a release like this to do and when i can walk away from from listening to something and just have that that feeling of satisfaction that feeling of uh, just just completeness and fullness that that right there tells me that i found something uh irreplaceable in the collection and, and just it, it, in in something that i love and this is definitely one of those, um, it's going to be a mainstay in, in stuff that I reach for and want to play at times when I'm feeling that in, in a certain way for years and years to come. It is just an amazing release. This was my introduction to this band. Uh, they had another full length that came out uh, a couple of years ago, and it, it's very good, too. I, I recently backtracked. I need to pick up a copy of that, of that, that previous full length because this is about as perfect of a release as, as I could think of. I mean, just when I feel full and satisfied after listening to it, that's the greatest compliment I can give something. And this one is definitely uh, deserving of that praise. That's all. That's my top 25 for this year. I'm sorry if uh, something you thought should have been on this video or on this uh, list was not there. There's some stuff on here that you haven't heard. I hope you take the time to go check it out. Uh, thank you. You guys, uh, you guys are what keep me going on this, you know, with my little break and everything and, and my kind of mental break um, this past year and me shutting down social medias. There was a time that I just wanted to walk away 
from uh, from YouTube, walk away from social media completely, and just focus on listening to my collection as opposed to sitting here talking about it. You guys are what make me do this, and uh, I do appreciate every one of you, the support that you guys have given me over the past five years or so, uh, probably longer than that now. It, it, it's just been, uh, it, I don't have words for it. I am very thankful for all of you. If you're not, if this is your first time watching the channel, uh, please feel free to stick around. I, I focus mainly just on collection updates. I don't consider myself a reviewer. Uh, I just look at m myself as a, a uh, extreme music enthusiast is the best way to put it, and, and physical media collector. I am always grateful, and uh, I thank you guys, even the trolls out there. I'm sure there will be a, a couple of those in the comments before this is over with. But, hey, you're watching the videos, and you're interacting with them, so I, I can't be too mad. So that's all I've got for today. I will see you guys soon. We're continuing on. We still have the uh, CD collection. We're marching through that every Sunday, and I have some other surprises on the way as well. I hope you all had a fantastic new year, and I hope we all have great things in store for us for 2023. Stay classy, stay metal, and I will see you guys very soon, I promise.